What are we making today, Chef? Uh, I don't know. Pork chops and non applesauce. <laughs> So we're gonna add our pasta to our boiling water. What else did you put in that water, Chef Eric? Olive oil, so it doesn't stick. Just a little drop. And some salt to increase the temperature of the water. Why is that important? So you can cook your pasta better and not add mushy pasta. That's why you wanna bring this back to a boil and then we can turn the heat down so it simmers and set the timer for eight minutes. Might take a little less, a little longer. So we're just gonna stir it a little bit so the pasta doesn't stick together, so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan, and wait for it to boil. Okay, why don't you tell us what you got going on over here? Over here, we have some pork chops pounded out. We have I, some... I did that, I pounded it in a gallon Ziploc bag with a little bit of olive oil, pounding it till it was kind of thin. They were already thin cut to begin with. Main thing is make them even. Yeah. So that they all cook at the same time, or at the same time. Okay, what do you have over here, Chef? We have some simple egg wash, just a couple eggs beaten with some cream and a little bit of water. And then we have our flour, which we are using the carb quick, and then some Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, uh, onion powder, and garlic powder. You can get carb quick on Amazon. It's for you keto people. Oh, hold on. Come back to the boil. There it is. Turn that down a little bit so it's a boil over. And we're going to set the timer for eight minutes. And then we can start dredging our pork chops. He's part there. cat, by the way. <laughs> sorry, sorry, the dog's taking over the, the video because he's adorable. He's like, I'm done with cameras. <laughs> okay, back to Chef Eric. Do you need a plate or something? I have a plate. Oh. Is this what you call the wet hand, dry hand technique that you've tried to teach me? Yep. So one hand stays dry with flour, and one hand is wet with the raw meat and the egg mixture. So you don't have glove hand. You all know what glove hand is, right? It's where your hand is coated in flour from breading. So I just cover it, add it in. Voila. These are good for like homemade tenderloins too, right? Pork tenderloins. Anything you want bread. Yeah. We're making what with them? More like schnitzel. Schnitzel and yeah, schnitzel. Unofficially. Unofficially schnitzel. Our version. Yeah. And if you notice, I am. Um, getting the pork chop covered in the egg wash and then hold it up here let it drain so you don't have extra egg wash going into your breading mixture and clumping it all up if your breading mixture does get all clumpy you can sift it through a strainer and get big clumps out and then you'll still have good breading to use Hmm. 
So these um, little cutlets or whatever they're called, they were one of the only thing left at the grocery store when we went. So um, yeah, so all you hoarders out there, thanks. <laughs> we had to get creative. We don't normally eat this, but I mean everybody's going through this right now. So and if you want to save money, you can always buy a good pork loin and just cut it yourself and pound it out. We, yeah, that's what we do sometimes. I freeze them two by two in, in the freezer. You mean you take one cut in half and make two portions out of it? No, I freeze two little pork chops that I we cut up oh. in the freezer. Yeah, if you they cut freeze them nice together. And just make pork chops out of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I stir the pasta? Okay, Chef Eric, we're back. What what did what have you been doing? We warmed up some peanut oil and we Put on a pan for the sliced mushrooms with some butter in it. Added some salt and pepper to the mushrooms. And now we're letting those saute and we're frying off our pork cutlets, which they fry really fast. Only about a minute per side. Do you want to tell everybody about um, what you know for a fact about cooking pork for all your health classes that you've had to take to be a cook? Sure. Since everybody seems to be misinformed on it. Number one thing is, everybody in America, you overcook pork. And that's why you don't like pork because it's dry. Try cooking pork to medium. Let it rest, it will be medium well. It will be perfect, excellent, juicy, so good. If you see a little pink, it's okay. You wanna know why? Pigs are no longer slop fed, they are grain fed. They no longer have trichinosis that you have to worry about. So, you don't have to cook it like your grandmother did. You know, kill it once, skin it, then slice it up and kill it again when you overcook it in the pan. Don't need to worry about that part. See, this is already done. And what temperature, not that you can temp these, but if you had a pork roast, what temp? 140 is more than enough. Let it rest, It'd be at least 145, and you're good. I don't know what the new FDA guideline is for cooking pork because they like to change their mind all the time on their temperatures, but it's somewhere around 145, 150. Okay. And then they taste like steak, a lot more like steak than they do cardboard. Now, if cardboard's your preference, then more power to you. <laughs> Same thing with your chicken. You can undercook your chicken to 160 and let it rest and it will come up to 165. Don't eat pink chicken. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you don't have to cook it till it's 165 then let it rest because then it's going to go way over to like 175 and you're going to have dry chicken. I wish they could smell this. This crusted in Parmesan. Parmesan and uh, carb quick, Yum. a little bit of seasoning. I didn't know we were making YouTube videos. <laughs> I didn't know we were either. <laughs> oh, the things that happen when you're in quarantine and bored out of your mind. These mushrooms are on high heat, by the way. Why? Why is that? Well, I'm trying to get the water out of them. Yeah.
And yeah, that's our clock. And yeah, it says 440. And yeah, we're eating early because we got nothing else to do. Um, I don't think they care what time we're eating. Quarantine cooking, baby. Oh, they're starting to get caramely bits on them. You know, if you put nothing in this pan but mu but the mushrooms, they would still caramelize and turn brown. They would taste quite good. Yeah, but good. the butter gives them flavor. Oh, absolutely. And if you can, Kerrygold grass-fed butter mm -hmm. is the way to go. This Put is that next to the next to the other butter, and you'll never go back. Hi, Dickens. Once you start to get most of the water out of these mushrooms, now it's just a matter of cooking it down to your palate's preference. You know, how much do you like your mushrooms cooked? You want them to be like canned mushrooms? Keep going. Do you like them to have a little firmness, a little al dente? Then this is probably pretty good because they're going to still cook in the sauce a little bit. I like mine. GBD. Did I say that right? Golden brown and delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except the mushrooms aren't really going to get that way. They get golden brown. They're getting golden brown right now. Good in your mushrooms. A little shot of ginger. And because we love garlic in our house and help fight off corona and vampires. That's a very precise measurement of a tablespoon. Use a knife. Mm. That was heavy whipping cream. That was a lot of heavy whipping cream. Probably two cups. By the way, if you didn't hear already, um, most of the family is doing keto. Well, most of the time, everybody's doing keto. Some of the time, Eric and the little girls aren't. Alright. You could skip the cream cheese and just let this cook and reduce it that way. And it won't scorch it. Now if you stir it. Gotta remember, uh, cream is just milk with all of the fat in it. So we're gonna just add, you know, a couple tablespoons of cream cheese at a time. Mm -mm. Turn this down to simmer. Hold this, and I'll do that. Yeah. Actually, here, we'll come back when it's done. We just cooked it until it's thick. And it will thicken even more as it cools. So. Did you some, add any more cream cheese to it after? I had one more piece like I did before. So about two tablespoons. Uh, four tablespoons. You think so? Yeah. Okay. About two and two is what I did. <coughs> I'll have to cut the, coat the back of the spoon. That looks yummy. Okay, and then we have broccoli steaming. I'll show you the plate when we're all done. Oh, he also put some parsley inside. And a little bit more salt and pepper. And a little more salt. Finished product. Yummy. This is with noodles. I'll show you now. Hey, it's us again. Um, this is my final plate, keto plate. Um, it's one schnitzel. Don't ask me for any of the macros because you got to be kidding, right? Um, you can go to different channels for that. This is more of a chef inspired how to do keto or low carb not that that's low carb there but these two here 
Hi guys. These two here do not low carb. That that one over there who doesn't want to be in the video, um, she is keto, but she hasn't had any broccoli yet. Anyway, um, so give uh, one to ten. Air. It's a nine. It's very good. It's Sauce is perfect. Okay, Kendall. Um, it's really good. Um, I give it in eight and three fourths. In eight and three fourths. Yeah. Uh, Addison. Uh, Nine and a half. Nine and a half from the Keto Girl. Pretty good. Birdie? All right, guys. So, um, <laughs> I really like it. I wish I could get more sauce, though. The um, only thing that I don't is the downside about it is that the noodles were cold and they didn't get enough sauce. Um, but I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. We could have warmed up the noodles. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely could have. So, yeah, yeah. guys. I can't wait to try mine. Yeah. Now, the eight and three quarters girl <laughs> said something about the pork that before, but she didn't say it on video. So now say it on the video. Yeah. Start with the fact you thought it was chicken. Mm. <laughs> Mama, Mama gives it a 10 out of 10. Gum. I, what else did you say about the pork, Kimball? <laughs> I thought it was chicken, um, and that was very juicy. Um, and per cooked perfectly. Yeah. And she's our pickiest eater. Yum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, you wish you could eat this. So good. All right. Bye.